if this stuff goes really, really well, and the design principles that they're using here are uh, demonstrated to be effective, so you have the normal mode, the story mode, and then the challenge mode, I would love to see them go back and try it in raids. What happens if you add uh, a normal mode um, to Spirit Veil? Vale? What happens if you do that? Do you get way higher uh, participation? What happens if you do that? What happens if you um, turn more? I mean, I, I think this would, I think they'd probably do not, they wouldn't do the raid thing first. I'm getting ahead of myself. I think what they would do first is what happens if you make every end boss in the expansions or maybe even multiple bosses in the expansions into a strike mission? So what about Mordremoth strike mission? What about Joko strike mission? Uh, Balthazar strike mission? All that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I think that's some, a really good way of one, adding these systems into the game as players um in you know uh, as players progress through it rather than just having it all backloaded because one big criticism that i would have right now is that a lot of the the end game systems particularly strike missions you will never encounter them until you actually get to ice brood saga well that's going to be changing with the scarlet strike mission or well presumably the scarlet strike mission um with living living world season one but isn't that weird that you do scarlet and you have to wait until Ice Brood Saga to get another strike mission. That's a little unusual. Bit of a change of pace there with how the game is flowing. So I think that that will be something they would probably look to do is to make, hell, make Zaitan a strike mission, make Mordremoth, make um, Joko, make Balthazar uh, a strike mission as you go through all of that content. That makes a lot of sense to me uh, that they would do something like that. Look, this is all I'm saying. Imagine if they actually added easy motor raids. Because strike missions do really well, everyone plays them, everyone's farming them every day, everyone's getting that one gold. Juicy one gold from the CM. Extra. Wow. And then bam. They bring back raids. Easy mode raids. Everyone starts playing those as well. Raids are back. Wing 8. There's a better like, uh... chance of a big-nosed head strike mission than there is for <laughs> Wing 8. <laughs> Look. It's tea time, yeah. Enough of you just guys just requesting songs to entertain yourselves. Now we entertain you. Oh, are we live? Yeah, we're live. Oh, they can hear us right now? Oh, yeah. Well, we were just talking before tea time officially started amongst ourselves about how Power Reaper needs to get a buff. It does. This is true. Yeah, it's very underwhelming in Arena Net. I hope they buff it during the, the balance patch. Yeah? That's yeah. one of the big things that you want to bring up? Yeah, I need it for my secret spirit chart farm. Oh, really? Yeah. My top secret spirit you chart farm. You just ruined the secret. Now people are well, going to look know, for it. They don't know where it is. No, they'll never find it. I'll, I'll put out a $100 bounty. Ooh, if 100. someone can tell me what it is. $100. Wow. I mean, it's how all, do... That's fake and it's a lie, but, but you'll never find it. How do they know if it's the correct farm, though? Exactly. So, I mean, they'll like, never find it. If, if good. So I think you know, if if they find a spirit shard farm, they tell you about the spirit shard farm, and you just lie to them and tell them that it's the wrong one, and you actually have a better one. How do they? Yeah. How do they know? Or yeah. is that just they? They can't get past that. Yeah, it doesn't exactly. like count if someone finds a better one than yours. Uh, no, there is no better one than mine. <laughs> Completely convinced. <laughs> yeah, mine's the best. It's the best, and they need to buff Power Reaper so I can do it even faster. I like that. Is it like Power Reaper specific? Like, why Power Reaper for this? No, Power Reaper is just really good at it because mm. it self buffs and it has really good cleave. Yeah. They actually nerfed Power Reaper, of course, which is a bit sad, actually, wasn't it? They made it take, um, it has less damage reduction in Shroud now. I actually don't know why they did that. That was a really bizarre nerf. Though, you know, you know that build that's really oppressing the PvE meta? Power Reaper. Yeah, that build? Ooh, yeah. yeah. Let, like... <laughs> They're laying the groundwork. They're going to lower its defenses in this patch like they did. And then next patch, they can buff the offense. That's... Yeah. It's, I can see them doing that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, they, I, they should, but will yeah. they? I mean... Uh, I still, this is very, very, very off topic here. I like that. You know, I, I blame Brazil for this. He's coming in immediately. Im you know, he's just got to the point, right? So normally on tea time, we talk normally for around an hour. Then we start going off on tangents. Brazil's like, you know what? No, we're just going to start with the tangents and never actually go on topic. It's a bit like the Yu-Gi-Oh thing. You know, the old meme where can we do a tea time without mentioning Yu-Gi-Oh? You're just getting in there immediately. Like, boom, instantly. 
day one. But anyway, yeah. Power Reaper is now the new topic of the Sea Tongue. I'm going to change the title, and here we go. This is now a fully Power Reaper-themed podcast. Welcome, everyone. And indeed, here's the proper introduction thing. We're here to talk about some random things, guys. We're going to talk about Season 1 coming back in the game. There's a new episode. There are some people playing it, but a lot of people aren't playing it. Then you've also got the Strike Mission Challenge Mode, and probably some other random stuff as well. Welcome guests. Welcome to Lara. Welcome to Nike. Welcome to Brazil, aka Underworld Video Preston. Hello, my friends. And welcome to everyone watching. Is that what it stands for? What? What does it stand for? Like, you... you UWV. Underworld yeah. Video. Really? Because it, it was just me at first. It was just Preston. And then there were more people, aka there were two people. And so, I don't know, I just needed tags for social media and shit. And it looks like, like Hulu, it. and so it's it's extra bonus material. Yeah, yeah that's what it's well, for. But what if people start calling you Uwu Preston from now on? Are, are you okay with that? Or, or well, would that be like after, a backfire? After the VR chat incident with Sedius, <laughs> um, that is part of the official lore. Yeah. Sounds good to me. There, there were pink fur suits. Yep, and sounds mm -hmm. and everything changed. But yeah. anyways, let's talk about season one. Yeah, <laughs> nobody's playing it. So this is a really interesting topic for me actually because uh, I talked about how I wanted them to bring back season one a while ago, and uh, me and uh, Nike and Sneb we argued about it. I was in the affirmative. Right, uh, and I th I'll give you a brief summary of the conversation. I basically said they should bring it back. It's weird that the game is unfinished. It's weird there's a cutscene instead of content. You go into the game, you have no idea who the characters are, right? And then Sneb said, "No, just make new content." Nike said, "Just make the cutscene better." Okay, don't waste your time on season one. I think that's a uh, that's a a brief summary of how the conversation went down. Interesting conversation. That you, just, you should go watch it, right? Because now we get to see who's right in real time, which is my favorite thing. But it might not quite be going my way actually because as it turns out uh the season one content is not being played by that many people in fact there, there was i think um a guild wars 2 efficiency graph that was was exposed was shown recently on the subreddit and it's it's something crazy like five to ten percent of people have done it. It, it it's very very low like significantly lower than literally anything else in the game now what do we think about that you know i i, I could say more I, I want input. I, I desire input from the gamers here. What do you guys think about season one? Right? Is that good? Is that bad? What's going on? Depends how like Anet spins good. it. Yeah, I agree. They, they can go, look, we knew no one was going to play it, but we needed it so that when we launch on Steam, the whole game is there. And it's, 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 it's like filling in a pothole on a road people don't drive down very often. But you want to be able to say your town doesn't have any potholes. So you fill it in anyway, even though it was a complete kind of waste. And that's where we're at. They, they filled in the pothole. And now we can move on, hopefully. Yeah. And I hate to say I was right, but... You know, I, I, I think yeah, that... I'm... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Well, no, I'm, I'm actually surprised because I held Teapot's position. I, I mean, I've talked about it before. Um, but like, I, I was of the same mind that like it was empty and we needed season one back to fill it in and that surely it wouldn't be as bad as we remember it being. Uh, and I was wrong. They actually still have the signposts and it took like 45 minutes for me to do that part because the progress bar fills so slowly and the signposts are there and the characters are so different from what they are now i would argue better i think bram is more interesting but it's vastly different than anime meme character that that he turned into so i don't know it's fucking it's weird yeah, I, I think it is really interesting when you're looking at this stuff because the game really has evolved, as you pointed out. Like, a lot of the season one content, and even season two, right? See, I think 
people were pretty excited about, oh, wow, let's go and play season two. Everyone gets season two for free. It is very different. Like season three onwards is completely universes away from what uh, from what season two is in terms of the production. The production value is a lot lower in the early stuff and season one, probably even more so. It's obviously been kind of jiggled around a little bit to be squished into these uh, chapters uh, that is the way the story is conveyed now as opposed to the every two week kind of very little mini episodic format. So that is pretty good, uh, I suppose. But yeah, it's definitely a bit of a, a bit of a shock, I think, when you when you go back to the older content. Um, but I, I think because it wasn't changed so much, uh, I, I think that there's another aspect of this that we I, I think that's worth considering. I think that bringing back season one might be relatively a low effort thing and it, as nike says it's just for completeness it's just for the okay right game is finished steam release look our game doesn't have this giant plot hole in it any, in, anymore nice good job gamers and you get introduced to a strike mission in the core game which i think is pretty cool actually because it will be the you know the final episode is going to have a strike mission attached to it with a challenge mode try doing that with core classes that's going to be fun uh <laughs> wait is that the is that the only strike mission that the core game will have yeah and all of the raids require Heart of Thorns, right? Or uh -huh. Path of Fire. Yep. Wow. Right. So this is like the only like actual in-game content that the core game has for PvE. I think you can do fractals in the core game still. Oh, yeah, that's right. I guess, well, they don't want you to do fractals anymore. So I don't count those. Uh, I think they do. It's still like pretty fantastic gold per hour compared to most of all the, the older things that we'll probably talk about later in this podcast. <laughs> Yeah, I like this. No. I, I, you know, let, let's have another podcast about fractals. I'm ready. Yeah, that was good. Though, Did you guys so know they removed still. Mystic Coins from Fractal Challenge modes? Yeah. Heavens yeah, to Betsy. Crazy. Did you know that Fractals oh, are dead? Yeah, nobody's doing them anymore. Every time I go on LFG, there's just like only like 20 groups doing them every evening. It's very upsetting. I think no, one like... thing uh, to keep in mind with the season yeah. one yeah. is <laughs> that it's it's not like we would have had the next living story, the post Cantha living story season now, if it wasn't for the season one. Like they didn't delay uh, living story season six or whatever to uh, put out season one. It mm -hmm. would have just been dead zone with like just the strikes coming out. It would have been like the post HOT like release all over again and i'm pretty sure the season one stuff was i mean if i had to guess was done with a much smaller team than what would be assigned to a living story actual season so it, it probably didn't they probably don't need it financially to be as big as a living story chapter in terms of oh, yeah. player retention because yeah. it was probably done with a shoestring budget anyway we're was. definitely in the filler zone uh, if you the, the roadmap there um it was really good that all the stuff that's coming up we have the festivals the strike missions the legendary weapon variants but we are in 100 percent filler mode uh and i think you, you know you can kind of put two and two together with this people have said this for a while but i think it's very clear that they went completely all in on finishing end of dragons and they barely <laughs> managed to do it right they had to delay till the last day of february uh to release the game there were issues with the game on launch right specifically around reward structures Th those were those are, I forgot that's to add ambient NPCs to Kainang City. Yeah, I mean, did did they? What do you yeah, think? There's on? It's it's a it's, it's dead. It's an ultra populated modern city with no one walking around. It's nice. No no talking. It's Unlucky. Crazy. Unlucky. But yeah. Um, so I I think that weirdly enough they probably didn't really have anything prepared to release after the expansion. Not much anyway. I think that's why they're, they kind of, they're delaying the strike mission CMs as well to give people like a, a thing to happen in the game. Same with the legendary weapon variants. Same with season one. These are things that they probably can release that don't require too much, too much crazy um, like dev time to release and just be a little, little thing they can polish up with the game and improve it in a little way have something that people can log into play before we go into the next season um it's almost the same with stuff like all the you know the world versus world stuff right when there's gonna be an alliance test soon that'll be like oh wow look come and log into the game and play some world versus world alliances they've done a very good job of masking 
the the drought because i i think i'm when we know the date for when the next season is going to start it's going to be a really interesting comparison on how the community reacted to not really having any new content in eod to not having any new content in heart of thorns and i think that it, it's actually going to speak a lot of a, a lot of volumes about how the company has matured in terms of its community management right because i i, I think that we're going to have a very comparable drought even when there isn't really going to be anything new happening in the game. Not much. They're just being a bit more intelligent with the way they're uh, releasing things and kind of drip feeding things in. You'll have a comparable gap, but the difference is, is that everyone was really big mad uh, before. And now I think the um, I think people are actually feeling very positive about the future of the game. I think the morale is high. That's the sensation that I get from the Guild Wars 2 community. Morale is high. I'm seeing a lot of art posts on the Guild Wars 2 subreddit. I'm seeing a lot of other MMO bad posts on the Guild Wars 2 subreddit. I think everyone's feeling good about the game right now. Yeah, like, I, I think the gap between HOT and Season 3 was, like, almost a year. Wasn't it, like, nine months or something? Yeah. Um, to me, Season 1 coming back just kind of feels like something to tide us over and then they've mentioned that the strike stamps were kind of like done when eod came out um of course they might they might have tweaked them a little bit based on the normal modes but it feels like just being very tactical right they're like hey we got season one this was kind of low effort for us to bring back of course still effort required but compared to producing all new season like something we can do fast uh, put out these episodes every once in a while we put out legendary weapon variants we put out those strike stamps which we finished a while back um, it just seems like a smart way to get through this drought. Uh, I'd almost say it's kind of comparable to when they did like Living Worlds Returns before EOD came out, uh, which was like, you know, it's just some achievements, but it was just something for people to do. So yeah, I don't, I don't think it's bad if the if the player numbers are a little bit lower. Um, I think a lot of people, it, it doesn't like bring as much excitement when you've just got like, you know, some new story instances that you get to play compared to like a whole new map you can go to and everything so i think it, it, it makes sense that less people are playing it but looking at the future um especially with the steam release and stuff it's I, I think it's one of the best things they could have done even if the player numbers aren't like super high yeah I think I'm still I'm still on team season one. I'm a big fan yeah. of being added back into the game. I think that giving new players a really uh, cohesive story experience, because that is what a lot of people play MMOs for, right? You know, you can look at a game like Final Fantasy, right? It's a very story-driven game. I would certainly put Guild Wars mm -hmm. 2 into that category where a lot of players are very invested in the characters and the story. Uh, and it's going to be very difficult for a new player to kind of latch onto that if your introduction to some of the most important characters in the story through literally the entire game from um, season one all the way through to uh, the end of End of Dragons, uh, if those characters are introduced via a cutscene, it, it's it's going to be a little weird, I think, uh, for a lot of those players. Uh, so I do think it is a really good thing to uh, add Season 1. Um, but I, I, I am a little bit surprised that... Um, not a lot of people are at least replaying it. Just just almost almost for a bit of nostalgia or just like, oh, you know, I remember that. I was there for that. How interesting was that? How crazy was that? Let's go see how it looks, see how it ages. Because that was that was definitely a curiosity I had with playing through all of the old content. It's one of the reasons why I enjoyed Season of the Dragons because it was like, wow, do you remember that? That was a long time ago, huh? The game's really come along. It's really changed uh, from that point. I think maybe it's going to come down. I, I'm going to be super boring here. Um... If if they added like a legendary trinket from season one, do you think loads of people would play it? I feel like loads of people would play it if if they did that. I, I mean, yeah, probably. Yeah, you, they'd pinch their nose and play it because now I've uh, I've got a theory on this because there is actually a collection that Ooh. you unlock if you get Ooh. the meta uh, achievements. Um, it's called the Lion's Memory. And like Ooh. the, we, we don't really know what it is yet, but uh, the item is called like the lion something. And then the description is like, time heals all wounds. So what I think they're doing, I think they're going to make a launch boss for Old Lion's Arch, which I think is like an amazing thing to do for season one. But yeah, like Wait, it, it feels a bit a weird lot. to like go invest into those achievements when you don't really know what the reward is, um, because we just kind of don't know for sure what it's going to be. But there is something. It's not there. There's like nothing for completing it. There is something. Interesting. 
Very yeah, interesting that's... indeed. Yeah, I could see them I adding started... something like that. Because, you know, I, I think that um, one of the things that Arena do want to do is introduce a lot of players to legendaries. I think they, they want to get that. I think that's why they made, uh, like, the... The Aurene ones, I, I guess, like you can kind of grind a lot of the materials by playing the game. I think they really want to get players into that system uh, as much as they possibly can. And they'll do that more when the uh, the legendary weapon variants come out. Uh, but yeah, uh, go ahead, Brazil. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, I, I started playing Season 1. And it was enjoyable to go back and see the nostalgia and remember some of the stuff. Um, and then I got up to the Molten Facility and I was like, this is going to be fun. I loaded into it and then... Realized I had some stuff I needed to take care of and I should put it put it aside for the day and then come back to it later. Mm -hmm. And then I just never logged in and I kind of forgot about it and then started doing the strike mission stuff. But I don't know. It was. Yeah, I, yeah it's I, just. It's, I, yeah. There's going to be a bit of a warped perspective from, from players like us, because we are yeah, obviously, yeah, it released yeah, yeah. at the same time as the strike. We're obviously a lot more yeah. interested in the new fresh strike mission challenge, which was, I mean, that, like, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment, obviously, but the strike mission challenge mode, I think the entire end game scene was waiting on that, because that, it was the moment that was going to define how hopeful people are about the future of Guild Wars 2, uh, in, certainly from the hardcore scene's perspective. Because it was like, if this challenge mode isn't good, if it doesn't deliver on an interesting puzzle, an interesting challenge, then everyone's going to have zero hope and just completely deflate and just like... Uh, so I think there was a lot riding on that. So obviously people were a lot more engaged with... Well, certainly, you know, a lot of the, the veterans were very, uh, very engaged with waiting for that to drop at the same time. But yeah. Living one. Living, living one. one. Living one. I'm, I think we need the Karka back. It's a shame that South Sun Cove is just kind of a mess still. Yeah, it got it got snubbed, right? Like they didn't do uh, Lost yeah. Shores. It was like the first ever episode and boom, didn't make the cut. It's unworthy. <laughs> this is actually, this is something uh, that comes to mind. <laughs> do you think that the way that they initiated living story where it was content that was temporary and would be hard deleted and that was the selling point of it do you think that's the biggest mistake Anet has ever made you know it, it's it's a yes and a no um i think it was a good idea probably a little naive but it's a very interesting idea isn't it like isn't that the ultimate fantasy that people have with an mmo is that the game actually changes in a real way um and isn't static because in like ultimately you know there's this when you're progressing through an mmo story there's a level of suspension of disbelief right you can see a character who you just killed in the story in the open world five minutes later right um you know you you can go back to the starter zone and you see the character that is totally different down the line right and you can you can go and interact with them there so it is the ultimate mmo fantasy to have something that actually changes over time is it a very practical or realistic thing probably not but I almost, I don't want to say that it was a big mistake purely because I think that their heart was really in the right place and it was, it, it's a cool idea. I want to give them credit for the, for, to, for, I want to give them credit for trying, you know? <laughs> I think that's a good way to look at it. I was, I was nostalgic a bit last night about dungeons and the dungeon team and a bunch of stuff at launch. And also I was looking back at the Kanak fight in south sun and how that was that was like a hard thing everybody remembers this is really hard this is really difficult we had trouble with it and people figured out how to cheese it with lifesteal and how to fight him in a corner and all this stuff and i went back and i'm like surely this is this fight was really good and i'm remembering it it was great and i watched a video of it and it's fucking shit <laughs> like <laughs> you you have a bundle and you like spray stuff over mines on the floor and then Kanak has to chase you over it. And like every single time he just, when he needs to like look a different direction, he'll just plant in place and like pivot and look off and then chase you is so bad. And I mean, I guess the, the stuff after or the rest of the season one stuff that they've added back is it feels a lot more modern. The champion fights at the end of the, um, where you go help Bram and rocks those feel like decently modern 
But fucking, I can't imagine if they added the Canuck stuff back. That would be that would be wild. I mean, it is in the game right now. It is. Yeah. You can play is that in the game Brian right now? Cole, can't you? Yeah. What? <laughs> Are you serious? You can go do that fight right, right now? now? Yeah, you can go do that fight right now. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> no way! Yeah, it was a vision of the past. Oh shit! Oh, is that the that was for the legendary trinket, wasn't it? <laughs> it was for the it was or, an ice fruit saga when they they experimented right and brought back a bunch of um season one. Content. No, I don't I don't know anything about this. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. I either just didn't do it, or I... Yeah, it released ages I ago, but... those updates, too. They, yeah, because they were probably tested... This was probably when they were playing around with the idea of bringing Season 1 back. It was during Ice Rude Saga, right? And they were like, hmm, okay. We have this Visions of the Past thing, and it was supposed to... Be, it was... Visions of the Past, to this day, is one of the weirdest things. It's it's one of those... Look, you could probably get, like, a 10-hour Wooden Potatoes video out of this, because uh, they obviously were going to do more. I actually remember this. They went to... um. They went to PAX, I think, right? And they were hyping up, oh yeah, Visions of the Past, this is big, it's gonna be, we're gonna do more than one of these, we're going to, um, you know, take you back into, you know, behind the character, right, to see what happened from another perspective. And then they only ever did it once. Uh, and probably because Ice Brood Saga kind of got, got the axe, uh, and then they went to Ender Dragons instead, of course. Uh, but what an interesting idea. And then they they toyed around with adding some Season 1 stuff back into the game, and yeah, the, the Kanak stuff was there. There was, um... There was something about rocks, something about Brian that you could play, and you could do the Kaith uh, stealth mission as well. I believe was the was the other one that um, got brought back at that point, which is of course we will be implemented, I imagine, uh, into the regular story now um, at the same time. So that's going to be a little bit Probably unusual, not. but well, you don't think so? No, I think they will just use other material and not put that in because it already exists in Visions of the Past. I, I think lie. actually, uh, no, because it was like this weird thing that you unlocked after you did like the actual vision of the past thing. It was like, if you do these achievements, you get to play these season one instances. And it was really weirdly accessible. You had to like talk to a random NPC in the Eye of the North or something. Um, but actually, there was one instance in there where you were with Bram in Craigstas, which is now in the story. So it's no longer available in Visions of the Past. They actually removed it from the scrying pool because now it's like integrated in the story. Um, so they're, they're planning to get rid of all of them and, and move them just into the story. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know, like, I can't believe I didn't know about this. That's mind blowing to hear that that's actually content you can go do. Because it's yeah, just it really weird. Well, it's like I mean, really that could not fight is so and, like, bad. I mean, it's just dated, right? It's not yeah. necessary. You know, I think some of these things you have to... I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm being overly charitable, but I think when you look at the old content, you have to you have to appreciate it for what it is. You have to go like, wow, this is this is pretty interesting. You know, it's interesting to see the the way the game was. It's not bad. It's maybe a little simplistic. It's not quite as flashy uh, and highly produced as a lot of the new content in the game but i think you can I, I think it's not that bad i think it's fine um i think the stuff in season one and definitely season two that really stands out is just how much um exposition there is you know when i um i did vision right and one of the things that absolutely drove me crazy um was doing the achievements in uh, having to do some story achievements to get like the staff piece or something like that and man, the NPCs talk a lot in Guild Wars 2 and you can't shut them up. They just don't stop talking. But holy shit, in season two, it's even worse, right? They talk for like 10 minutes. Um, <laughs> just like, it's just dialogue, like no gameplay. Um, and they just don't stop talking. Uh, and, you know, I think that's what really stands out in like the earlier, uh, the earlier seasons is how they don't really have much gameplay going. It's very, very, we're telling you what's happening, listening to our dialogue, listen to us uh so that's where i think it falls down a little bit but i think the gameplay is actually fine I, I think having like a simpler style of gameplay and you know less like crazy production and me mega animations all this kind of stuff I, I don't i don't actually mind it to be honest was season two dry top and silver Ways? yeah yeah okay. okay i think also like it's i, I think it's also important to think that this is like for most new players gonna be some of the first story content they play so like when you know when some of us blast through these with with like our actually competent builds and it feels really easy and simple 
Um, I think it's important to remember that this tweaks more towards these people that don't even have an elite spec, right? Like season one is before Heart of Horn, so most players will play this on like core classes with like their terrible gear and their terrible builds. So might be like slightly more engaging. That's for, really for toxic and elitist of you to say. But... <laughs> is it now? How, how dare you? Oh, it's definitely a good point. You, you certainly don't want to be hitting players with this crazy intense boss fight early on. Um, you know, they'll get that when they face the pocket raptors in the first section of Heart of Thorns, right? That, that's, you know, it's good content. It, and it, it, it is funny, actually, you know, like, just bringing that up. It's a very, very side, a very tangential, but I always find it funny to think about, like, imagine going into, like, the Mordremoth fight at the end of Heart of Thorns, but imagine that you only have green gear, right? That is... That's actually a little interesting, you know? Imagine having a, a really scuffed build and no good items. Yeah, Mordremoth, I think Mordremoth can win at that point. You know, the boss can win at that stage. And that is, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> so you, you, that is worth worth considering for sure. The, the Where players are going to be in their journey is obviously going to need it to be taken into account uh, with this stuff for sure. But what does excite me about uh, Season 1 is that it, it is going to be introducing a strike mission. Uh, right at the end, the final uh, episode, the Battle for Lion's Arch, is going to have a strike mission attached to it. Probably a battle with Scarlet, I would say. Uh, I, you know, I I really hope they go really hard on it. I, I don't know if I don't know how much um how much time they're going to have or like how in depth the strike mission can go. But imagine if the strike mission was was actually like instead of just like a boss, it was actually a little bit more than that. So you had to go through all the different phases. I don't recall how the fight worked perfectly now, but I can imagine that you would have to deal with um you could even have to do with the, deal with the pre-event, right? Where like the three like watch night bosses drop down, then you have to kill them. Then you go out to the ship. Then you have to fight the boss after that as well. Uh, there's a lot going on there. It's actually a surprisingly intricate account uh, 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 encounter, actually, if I'm not mistaken. There's there's quite a lot going on there. You even have some of like the, the the kind of color coding stuff that we saw later on yeah. with Veil Guardian, uh, with like the different laser beams and stuff like that. Like that, there's a lot of potential. I'm really excited to see that strike mission. Actually, like, that could be that's going to be a big highlight and of course a great introduction um for newer players who just play through the personal story um you know you have to play a raw well you can do it solo these days but um you know you have to play through a raw to finish zaitan then you have to go and deal with scarlet with a strike mission i think that's really cool um i'm really looking forward to that particularly seeing as it's also going to have a challenge mode presumably on the same day actually you're just about to play the challenge mode day one very cool stuff i wouldn't presume that i'm you not wouldn't. excited about the strike mission at all actually Really? Wait, why not? Yeah, because they nerfed the Watch Knights. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe challenge mode is old Watch Knights, and you have to pay attention to the content whenever the Watch Knights are in the way of it. Maybe that's what the scene is. Wouldn't that be a twist? That's the reward for turning on the challenge mode. <laughs> Yeah, and and of course, as we see, you know, the entire season come together. Like I imagine they will tie in some kind of reward. I mean, this is a bit of a hot topic right now with the strike missions, which will will we're we're slowly veering towards that. I think uh, at this point, so get ready for that, everyone. Um, but it, players are not going to do anything without reward. Like that is what I've learned over the past um, over my years playing Guild Wars Two. If you don't give players something for doing it, even if it's fun. They won't do it, which to, to me, I, I, I want to scream when I speak those words. It hurts me to say that, but it doesn't make it any less true. Um, Got to get some rewards in there. Got to get that season one big overall meta reward thing. And I think you'll get some engagement on that, particularly when you uh, have the strike mission at the end. You know, I, I wonder if they're going to go further than this. Um, You know, the Battle for Lion's Arch event now... <laughs> I, I'm in two minds about this. So I'm super curious if, if you guys have recollection of this. Yes. When I when I think about that meta event, it was actually not good. Okay. I know everyone was like, wow, Battle for Lazard, it's so hype. I think when it drops, people are going to go, what the fuck is this? Okay. Like, <laughs> that's definitely the way I'm going to feel about it for sure. Changed, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you hype back then, though, you know? It's like pretty cool. It's like we we didn't have a lot of like large scale metas even back then. So yeah, and there wasn't anything where you had to split up either. Really, it was you had to split up to three different parts. It actually killed my computer too nice. because of all the processing and stuff. It literally killed my CPU, and I had to buy a new CPU. 
That was rough. Yeah. It, it's just, it almost reminds me of Dragon's End, right? It has like a really long pre-event that yes. you can just leech and then you fight the bosses at the end, right? And, and you just have to wait for that to happen. It's a bit weird. Um, it's an unusual meta. I, I almost hope that they change it a little bit. And and I presume they're going to have to, I think they're going to want to try and bring it back. I'm, I'm, I'm making a lot of assumptions now, but to me, they're going to want to have that in the game, I think. To have this transformation of the the big city. And, and you know what? I think it's going to cause people to rebel too. Because, you know, ima imagine experiencing old Lion's Arch, then moving to the putrid new version of Lion's Arch. I'll tell you what they're going to do. They're going to sell an old Lion's Arch um, gem store pass. That's actually 100% yeah. confirmed. There's no way they don't do that, by the way. That is definitely going to happen. Um, I think they'll make yeah. a lot of money off that too. Uh, that's going to that's gonna sell well, but uh i think they yeah it, i think they might try and bring that event back but what does that look like uh i presume they'd have to make it an instance because they can't really have it in the open world um they did they i don't think they actually mentioned the event specifically they just talked no. about the strike mission uh what do you think do you think the event itself is going to make a return or will it just be like a little story instance version of it uh and then then the strike mission with uh with, with scarlet at the end the marionette don't you have to go into eye of the north and like go through a gate or something to it yeah you do. yeah you do. yeah they'll i think they'll just add it like that it'll be an instance and you have to there'll probably be a public and a private are those that's the thing though i'm I, oh, yeah. I i'm not sure because it was almost like kind of an open rules map in a way uh like it was like the meta but there was also a lot of downtime and stuff um my my memories yeah. are pretty vague this I remember just like running around collecting stuff for achievements. <laughs> and I think you would get kicked out like every two hours or so. Um, I'd almost just want them to see it, see them bring it back as like an open walls map and then just have the, the meta events run just like it was back in the day. I could honestly see them just doing like story instances though and then just having the strike as like what represents the meta and then just the reworking it as being like story instances. I'm not sure. I, I want to believe they'll bring it back, but part of me almost thinks that they would have announced it if they were going to do that. Like, we'll bring back the meta as a cool boss fight you can start from Life North. Like, that would be a selling point, but mm. they just haven't really mentioned that. I'm not too sure. I, I think they might literally just, like, make a couple of instances that represent the meta and then call it a day. Oh. The pessimism. Oh my goodness. The energy. I'm excited need... for the strike, though. The strike yeah. is gonna be like. A... I think it'll be. I think it'll be cool. I think it, I want to see old Lions Arch. I'm. I honestly hate new Lions Arch. I think everyone does. I think probably the only people that. I don't know if. It, well, here's the actual issue. I don't know that there's anyone that likes it. They're people that are probably neutral towards it because they never experienced the old one but the old one had a lot of character and flair yeah and the old really lines cool. arch was like a nice walkable downtown area with like yeah. small businesses and the new one is like corporate dystopia where all those small businesses are replaced by tgi fridays and uh and and like starbucks and <laughs> Like it's completely sanitized and gentrified. It's it's just yeah, it's corpo. It's it's terrible. corpo. I I completely agree. Yeah. Wow. It's like nice it's like, parts it was, about it though. Like I, go, I I prefer old lines arch just because it wasn't this empty around the bank. Like it's just like an, a a plane basically, and I think that's boring. But there's this bits where you've got all these really nice houses close together, and you've got these like tiny alleyways and stuff. I like that part. I think that part was like an improvement, but for the most part, I, I'm just sad it's so empty for the most part. I'll just say it. Uh, Old Lion's Arch was new kinding city, but good. Wow. <laughs> Don't think it had a lot of wow. NPCs either, though, wow. now that I think about that. Man. By Ogden's Hammer. What Oh, I miss that. Oh, I actually miss that so much. Have the, you seen that remix someone did of that? Where they yeah, just, like, it's intense. It that? slaps. It's big energy. It's like guilters to history. Mm. On the uh, on the topic of metaverse, it's a, a slight tangent. We we alluded to this a little bit earlier. Do you think Do you think ArenaNet would ever do stuff like um, run the one time events again? So um, what I'm talking about is stuff like Do you remember Scarlet's Invasion, where 
like loads of the watch knights would just like drop down in random maps and attack you yeah honestly that was pretty scuffed you know what's really weird about that i i have a video i, I didn't i didn't end up uploading this actually but um we beat the event this is a very long time ago man this is a long time ago I, I probably still have it lurking around somewhere and the timer was like exactly zero zero we just barely defeated uh this epic invasion of the scarlet watch knights they would just like attack random maps um, and you have, like, the uh, Lost Shores Ancient Karka event. I mean, that, I think everyone should experience that, but this is very important. Irene, listen up. This is very, very important. If you bring back the Ancient Karka event, one, you need to bring back culling, and you also need to downgrade the servers a little bit so everyone experiences how unplayable it was. I, I think that it's not going to be the same. If they run that event again and it doesn't lag and I can actually see all the Karka, um, I'm going to be disappointed. So they're going to need to do yeah, that. Or just you DC and you can't get in back in and you're done. You're screwed. Or you get into, you turn all your graphic settings down and you just go into multiple overflow maps yeah. and you just tag the boss and get chests with precursors. Yeah, and everyone in your guild good. gets precursors, multiple, except you who don't get any. It feels really yeah. good. Kind Buds had, I think he got like 30 something precursors total. It was insanity. Nice. It was insanity. I haven't thought about him in a long time. Holy shit. And this is that's like some old pain that's coming back now. Well, Valtieros is even like 20. I think it was 2012 even. That That's how old this is. Oh, yeah. yeah here we are like 10 years ago. later, still talking about it. Still yeah. salty. It's, we didn't get our it's, precursor. <laughs> it's very vivid to me because I was out of town the weekend that that was happening at a friend's concert, like his choir performance. And I was pissed that I was missing guild wars 2 for a real life friend that i didn't like and so it was just fucking it sucked <laughs> i missed the ancient carca yeah and i would th swear you've told that story on this exact podcast i've told before. it like three, yeah three, four <laughs> times yeah. never forget he will never forget i, I think he got crab toss out of it that was a good and south sun survival yeah. big big Gilchrist dude did Battle Royale first, okay? You think you think it was PUBG that started? No, it was South and Survival. True. The, the first Battle Royale game. Yeah, what happens if you just replace the entire PvP game mode with Crab Toss? Do you think people would even notice? <laughs> no, it'd be about the same activity level as it currently is. Same number of players. I, I hate the Crab people. Toss community. Wait. Honestly. Yeah, wait. <laughs> <laughs> the people who are crab toss mains, I hate them. I hope wow. Anet, IP and hardware bans all of them. Wow. There's like They're one the person most, it's watching the most right toxic sub-community in Guild Wars 2. Really? It's the hardcore crab toss people. Yeah, they suck, it, man. They're they're bastards. They <laughs> they hate they hate when any other game mode gets content besides crab toss. It, like they get they get completely angry. Do you, who are the names? Can you give me a name of someone who's a prominent? I don't want crab to clout. Uh, I don't want to oh. give clout. Oh yeah, to yeah, yeah. People. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. It's because I, I think that that was that was some of the excitement of season one, not crab toss, but the the transient nature uh, of some of the content. And that's not ideal because you know we we have a great example of this, right? Like Brazil missed out on it because he was just away, and yeah, the events happened unlucky right if you weren't there you're not in okay and if you played the game you know a year after it happened well you'll never get to experience that but i wonder if they would ever like in, in a way maybe maybe like a new festival where they would run all of the uh kind of one time season one things again maybe so there would be like a you know a, a few like a two or three week period every year where they run the ancient Karka event they run the scarlet invasion right what other things were there there are a few other like random one-time world events i think that happened uh too i i oh wow it really is a long time ago my you know my my brain cannot recall all this stuff but yeah you could run all these things again that would be pretty cool actually so that players would actually have to it would experience these things because yeah, you'd have stuff like the nightmare tower right as well yeah you have the nightmare tower that also is a thing the mordor invasion yeah you have the mordor invasion but i mean look that, that was a little scuffed okay was that actually big pog was that really big pog i don't think that was big pog that was uh that wasn't it that was good. little pog yeah that it was, was a little pog. little mini pog you know a little little mini pog um 
I, I think that would be really cool because I, I do have a certain level of, you know, of, of nostalgia for that because I, I remember how, like, I was like, holy shit, I need to be online, right? Like, a, here's a story that I've told, like, on every single tea time because back in the day, guys, I, I, I didn't play that many video games, actually. I was not a, I was not a big gamer. And when the uh, Lost Shore um, was... Uh, was running it wasn't even late it, it, it was like 9 p.m my time but i would always go to bed um <laughs> basically around nine because i i got up really early in the morning um so i'd get uh, i'd get an early night i was like i'm gonna stay up i'm staying up to kill the carker and i remember just these it was it was hell it was hell but it was so good because it was it was like, okay, right, we've done another 15-minute Karka event, and there's another one. Then you've got to do another 15-minute Karka event, then there's another one. I was like, oh my god, when does it end? Right, I want to go to sleep, but it was worth it. I got Howl, and I actually made it into the Legendary too. There you go. Oh, damn. And that's why I want it back. I, I want to replicate that. I want to get a Precursor weapon. EOD yeah, there's, there's a certain... There's a certain like excitement about it, right? Because they they've done some stuff like that again. They did like the the Joko invasions around season four, um, but they just never really removed those. Like you can still go and do those Joko invasions, but just it doesn't make it as exciting, right? Like we sort of fondly look back at some of these like slightly questionable season one events that that were like super laggy and super buggy and stuff, but it's still like. I was there. It's like bragging rights that you were there for that specific event, you know? Yeah. I know, I kind of miss that. Even though, like, objectively, it was kind of bad to put in all these resources and then just have something be live for two days and then get rid of it. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Upsides and downsides. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of interested in what type of content is going to be released. Because I think in, in some ways, season one... I think they're going to use some of the same techniques uh, down the line, right? Like if there's going to be, you know, if they do end up making Battle for Lion's Arch into like a Dragon Storm style thing, well, in a way, that's another game mode, right? Like Dragon Storm is a game mode. It's 50 player instance content. You know, you've got strike missions, 10 player instance content. You have uh, Fractals and Dungeons, which is five player. You have Raids, which are also 10 player. Then you also have 50 player instance content. And then there will be like the the one-time events, like world events will be another type of content. I mean, I know that Arena probably don't want to spread themselves too thin and I can't really see them doing um, new one-time events, but it, I think there are some things here that are they're, they're a little subtle um, and they can definitely deliver some replayability because obviously the story itself, a lot of us have played through season one. So it's like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I did that. It was pretty cool. It's not really going to have a lot of value, long term value, but a strike mission. Yeah, you could play that every single week, particularly with a CM. OK, and, um, you know, if there was like a Dragonstorm style thing, you could even do that every day. I mean, doing Dragonstorm daily. I know that Ice Rude Saga is not the most popular thing in the universe, but yeah, people play Dragonstorm every single day and will probably play it forever, actually, because not only is it, it's a decent meta event, it's a decent boss. Um. You can do it whenever you like, and it's pretty damn rewarding at the same time. So I think a lot of systems like this are pretty good. They probably don't want to go too crazy on the instanced 50-player content because, uh, you know, that's what kind of what the open world is for. But I do like it. You know, I, I do want to see more stuff like this. And and I, I do think it's probably one of the, the ways that they could make some of this content a little more uh, challenging as well. Uh, there's probably going to be a bit of a knee-jerk response from a reading it on making things too difficult um you know in the story and in the open world because of recent events that listen i'm not i'm not even going to say what event i'm talking about right now because everyone's going to make fun of me for bringing it up again so listen ha i'm not going to do it i win um Echo but, uh, meta. E awesome. echovold meta exactly the clap attack but yeah it's some interesting stuff i think uh with season one i'm, I'm pretty hyped you know i'm ready i'm ready to go not really for the story but with um what the content could end up being and what it looks like for the future. There you go. <laughs> That's season one. I like. Yeah. It's, yeah. It sucks. It's, it's terrible. No rewards. Bad, low quality. Wow. Let's move on. Yeah. Okay, move on. Fine. I mean, let's go then. You know what else just dropped? You know, the, the bombshell that just dropped recently? That's right. Strike Roy mission. Arby's. Yeah. Wait, really? Nice. Arby's. Yep. Strike Mission Green CM. My crib is back. Strike Mission CM has arrived. I'm so excited. I, long I really awaited. Like it. Great. Yeah. Long awaited indeed. It's been a long time. 
It's, uh, we waited for this. We're ready to go. It's finally landed. Uh, it and it was, it was definitely worth it. Yeah. Uh, I, you, you know what? I'll admit it. I went in. I was really worried. You know, I was like, Easier. oh my God, it's going to die first try. Oh no, it's going to be a joke. Everyone's going to be mad. Everyone's going to be angry. I'm going to have to like put out the fire as the community is giant mad about the strike mission. But no, um, the exact opposite happened. I think that you probably would really struggle to find someone who is actually upset with the new strike mission sim. I think you'd really struggle to find people. I think it satisfied everyone. Um, it was given the context that it is going to be the easiest of the challenge modes as well. But, and obviously, you know, you know, it did die pretty quickly. It took around like 35 minutes um, to kill, right, for the first time, which obviously isn't that long, but it's not first try. Um, but I think with the context, knowing that it's it's going to ramp up in difficulty significantly, and I think the players now have a feel of what a challenge mode looks like, and they're extrapolating that. They, they've taken, say, Kaineng Overlook, and they go, oh, shit. That, okay, this could be really, really exciting. Or Harvest Temple, you're, you're like, oh, them. shit, that's going to be big, right? What are they going to do with that? And I think that that has actually made the kind of hardcore scene and a lot of the um, endgame PvE players really happy, actually. Um, and I have to say, I'm really impressed. I think that they've completely changed their design philosophy when it comes to instance content with these challenge modes. And... I'm really excited for the future. You know, it makes me, I want to see all these strikes and I want to see the fifth strike mission coming in uh, with the Battle for Lion's Arch 2. I think that they have, they've got something very special here that if they keep developing can be truly incredible. Yeah, I expect, my expectations like were that they would take the normal mode and just turn the dial up. Stuff that hit for 500 would hit for, you know, 5,000. Like that they would just keep keep it mechanically the same and just, make it a bit more punishing and then add like a meaningless enrage timer. I think that was probably like the low end expectations that I had, but I was pleasantly surprised that they added, like they expanded upon the mechanics and it's still recognizable as the same fight, but like the mechanics are, there's like a layer of complexity added on top and they were different. Like the laser safe spot bomb thing was like, like a very next level version of of that so it's like recognizable at the same thing uh, dark ringer says we said the cm was made first okay yeah sure a lot of people believe that too and maybe it's true but uh i think there were definitely people that ex that expected it to just be the normal mode dial turned up a notch oh definitely. it was it was really scary whenever i got into it I got into Grimjack's progression group and I was really afraid the first time that we wiped. I was like, oh, what? I was expecting just <laughs> with good players like that, that we were just going to go in and first try it. Honestly, I was expecting that. And then we wiped to a mechanic that's like completely trivial in normal mode. And it's like, wait, what's going on with his green circles? Like what? What? We have a buff? What? Like we're getting we're getting like exposed buffs on us like what's happening and then we got to the the crosses and the bombs and it's just like okay fuck this and it took us a while to figure it out and people were getting like frustrated and people were like no this is how it works no this is how it works and it was like a proper progression experience it took us i think about it was a little bit over an hour in it was it was awesome. It was like a week one of raids, except it didn't take that long. But it was a similar experience where people are like, you're linking whenever you get a buff. Like you link the buff in chat and like you make a sacrifice that maybe you fail a mechanic so you can mouse over the tooltip and see what it is the next pull. And then you just add a little bit more. It was it was really cool. And then the crosses and bombs, I was the first time I saw that, it was just visually overwhelming. It's just like, okay, what, how is anyone ever going to do this mechanic? It looks so insane. And uh, then it ended up not being that difficult to figure out, but it's really cool. It was a, it was a really good experience. The DPS check was, was really good. We wiped to DPS once because I think we had two people that, that died during the pool that we would have otherwise got it. 
it was it was awesome it was it was really cool yeah i think they nailed it i i uh i very much enjoyed myself it's like i don't know I, I was expecting it to actually be way less hard than this i was like just the first challenge mouse you know they're gonna do like a little ramp they're gonna like start super easy and uh it took me and my friends like two evenings even like you know i wasn't going in with like professional raiders we're like pretty casually raid like once every month or something and we wanted to like progress ourselves and it was it was like a good time like figuring out the mechanic it was like i was doing like the first raid boss they released in the past couple of years and i think they really nailed it where it felt like the same fight, but also it felt entirely different, and you still had to like learn it from scratch. I was a little bit scared that like because it's the same fight as the normal mode, that it would just be, hey, it's the normal mode, but there's two more mechanics, but you already know half the fight anyway. But it felt like a brand new experience, kind of. Um, and I really, really enjoyed myself. It's again, I was surprised by how difficult it was. Um, I genuinely think it's harder than than most Heart of Orange race, and that makes me kind of happy. I think it's even a good thing good because, too. yeah, like you the, the exposed thing, and you have to like not get hit, and it kind of encourages people to actually like try to do the mechanics instead of face tank everything. I was really really happy about it, and then you know I'm still like kind of in that in that good mood. So I'm like hell yeah, we just got some awesome content, and now the next one is coming out like nine days from now. Um, I I think they're just it feels like we're back in that like Heart of Horns era where they were like releasing Wraith Rings regularly and now they're releasing bosses regularly and we're just there's like two weeks, three weeks between them and then we know that there's gonna be the one from season one. I'm it's like my hype for the Strike CMs just got even bigger mm. just because I enjoyed this first one so much. I'm like, oh god, we're we're in for some uh, for some really fantastic fights. I my expectations were like massively exceeded. Us. Um, and they were pretty high, so I'm, I was very impressed. Absolutely. You know, it really is, uh, you know, even if you look at it, it's interesting because you can say what makes something difficult. I think div you can't just say, oh yeah, this is more difficult than that. It it's a very hard thing to boil down to a, a single, um, you know, a, a single variable really. But I do actually think that it would be fair to say that the Aetherblade uh, Strike Mission Challenge Mode is significantly harder um, than most raids, actually. The, the way I tend to evaluate it is with current knowledge, most raid bosses would die first try. Veil vale Guardian definitely would. Gorsival definitely would. Sabatha almost might get brute forced first try. It would die after one or two tries, almost certainly. Sloth would get brute forced incredibly quickly. Matthias would get brute forced incredibly quickly as soon as you, you were done with the reflects. Most bosses wouldn't survive very long at all. They would die immediately because of... Um, how well we understand builds, how skilled the player that bases become over time, uh, how low the hit points are on these bosses, how much damage you do as well. Uh, th this stuff would just get annihilated. And Mitrin, I am uh, very impressed that Mitrin survived as long as she did um, because it did have that puzzle element to it. You had these very hard mechanical checks. If you don't do this, you will die. You cannot continue um, unless you successfully execute this. And I, I really like the fact that they punish you for going down so I think the, um, well, I actually think this is bugged. This isn't confirmed, uh, by the way. Uh, this is just me theorizing. There's a weird thing right now where if you get hit by certain mechanics, um, you get this exposed debuff that got mentioned. Basically, you take more damage and it stacks up. It's 25% per stack. So obviously, if you have like five stacks, you're going to die to basically everything. Um you actually lose it when you go down state. I think that's either one, a mistake, uh, or two, a bug. Uh, I think that m it might be linked to the fact that um, you typically lose all status effects when you go down state. And that, so it might be like a tech thing that they're maybe looking at. But th that seems that that's the only thing that actually feels like a little bit off to me is the fact that you lose the punish for failing the mistakes when you go down state, which means that going down state and then getting revived up is incredibly profitable. But outside of that, I love the design of Exposed, right? That 
because um, obviously Gu Guild Wars 2 is a very dynamic game where you lose health and gain health really quickly. You have evasion, you have invulnerabilities and stuff like that. It's really important that you get punished for tanking mechanics and you can't just like ignore them and overheal them. But you don't want everything to be a one shot, right? You want it to be like an almost like an escalating path of failure, right? Yeah, hey, look, that's what some people would call path of fire. Uh, but anyway, you, you want it yes, to be yeah. escalating, right? And, and, and not be like an instant one shot, which is, you know, which is a bit difficult to implement but i think um that the team did a really good job with exposed i hope they really ramp that up and just make it even more punishing right so if you're getting hit by these mechanics you're going to have a really tough time um and it's a good solution to making not literally everything one shot you while also having some good one shots in as well right uh you know there were, there were a lot you know failing the green circle the giant bombs the orbs hit really hard. Um, the lightning hits really hard. Uh, you know, you if you if you don't do the bomb puzzle, you instantly die. Yeah, I, I'm. I have nothing but good things to say actually about the new strike mission. CM. It is it is fantastic. It gives me a lot of hope. And of course, just like you said, Laura, it's from the story. They did the CM first, so they can do that with relatively little effort. So we could be getting this with. We could potentially be getting a new strike mission uh, with every single living story release when we get to that. That's actually insane. If you think about um, that compared to what we're used to, the amount of content that the uh, that's going to be coming to uh, Endgame instance PVE, it's going to be like nothing we've ever experienced. Right? It's it's bizarre. <laughs> well, the the post HRT <laughs> launch was probably the. Not not going to equal that again. Yeah, because that was we only, we got like a that raid was, every that was three, three raid months, wings right? within within yeah. nine months, which is pretty good. Yeah, that was pretty good. But I mean, what even even that could be matched potentially. I mean, let's imagine that an, a living story episode has two bosses in it. They could make two strike missions. I doubt that. You think that's pushing it? Is that a little, think one, little too much? Take your one and be happy. <laughs> Yeah. Something that really surprised me, actually, um, and this is something more of you might have run into, but uh, the DPS check is actually kind of intense. Yeah. <laughs> Again, if you're going in with, like, you know, if everyone knows what they're doing, that's that's trivial. But um, we actually ran into that. We actually ran into the thing where it was like, oh, wow, we did all the mechanics, we know how the fight works, but we don't have enough damage. And we actually had to, like, swap stuff around and stuff. Um, that was, that was surprising. I felt like the first time since like Twin Largos that there was an actual DPS check that that was like worth caring about. Um, I don't know. It just felt like a return to form to me. And yeah, yeah. like you said, the idea of getting them regularly. I think two is pushing it probably. <laughs> I I would be uh, very happy with one per episode because that would be like one every three to four months or something. Like when you think about it, the the later rates that we got, a lot of those later oh, rates one a year. Yeah, but even like those, a lot of those raids didn't have a lot of bosses in them, right? Very often it was like a wing with like two, like good bosses, and then like some events and stuff in between them. Um, so I I think that's potentially it. Kind of depends on like whenever Living World Season Six is happening. But I don't think it's gonna match pre HOT, but it's, it it might get close. It might actually get there. Yes. Yes. Um. And uh, well, th this this is where I do go a little crazy. Okay, I, I admit this. This is very optimistic, right? You know, Nike ha he, he, Nike's been making kind of um, character profiles for all streamers. This is my weakness. I believe it was saying like irrational optimism is my known weakness in the uh, oh, character yeah, card absolutely. I have. Um, but I think that if strike missions do really well, and and more on that later when we start talking about rewards. Holy shit! Um, but. If this stuff goes really, really well, and the design principles that they're using here are uh, demonstrated to be effective, so you have the normal mode, the story mode, and then the challenge mode, I would love to see them go back and try it in raids. What happens if you add uh, a normal mode um, to Spirit Veil? What happens if you do that? Do you get way higher uh, participation? What happens if you do that? What happens if you um, turn more? I mean, I, I think this would, I think they'd probably do not, they wouldn't do the raid thing first. I'm getting ahead of myself. I think what they would do first is what happens if you make every end boss in the expansions or maybe even multiple bosses in the expansions into a strike mission? So what about Mordremoth strike mission? What about Joko strike mission? Uh, Balthazar strike mission? All that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I think that's some, a really good way of one, 
adding these systems into the game as players um in you know uh, as players progress through it rather than just having it all backloaded because one big criticism that i would have right now is that a lot of the the end game systems particularly strike missions you will never encounter them until you actually get to ice brood saga well that's going to be changing with the scarlet strike mission or well presumably the scarlet strike mission um with living living world season one but isn't that weird that you do scarlet and you have to wait until Ice Brood Saga to get another strike mission. That's a little unusual. Bit of a change of pace there with how the game is flowing. So I think that that will be something they would probably look to do is to make, hell, make Zaitan a strike mission, make Mordermoth, make um, Joko, make Balthazar uh, a strike mission as you go through all of that content. That makes a lot of sense to me uh, that they would do something like that. Um, uh, and then eventually, if all this stuff does really well, I could actually see them doing raids. Because, listen, okay, I call it 100 this Gamers. Is the copium this cakes, is the This oh is my not, God. Th this is re this is Relium, okay? This is, this is this not is, Copium. This no is like Copium. crystallized. Let's go. Chop it into lines and snort it with a $20 bill Copium. Yeah, yeah. If I ever heard it. I am getting on this train. I'm I'm feeling it. This, yeah, this my boy happening. Lazarus needs to be a strike mission. Like, yeah, so yes. yeah. But just like one strike, like per season or per expansion, would just be such a huge difference already. Just just one, four in total or something. That that'd be awesome. Yes. Look, this is all I'm saying. Imagine if they actually added easy mode to raids. Because strike missions do really well, everyone plays them, everyone's farming every day, everyone's getting that one gold. Juicy one gold from the CM. Extra. Wow. And then bam. They bring back raids. Easy mode raids. Everyone starts playing those as well. Raids are back. Wing 8. I believe. I hope. Even though I probably yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't think, I think, I don't think so. I'm just waiting for Guild Wars 3. Whoa. <laughs> just kidding. What's more copium? Just Guild Wars kidding. 3 or raids going back? <laughs> uh, I mean, we know Guild Wars 3 is in development. We don't know anything about Wait, do we? <laughs> Wait, do we? Wait, do we? Uh, I mean, not officially. I, I, I've I heard reckon they're working on unofficial, unconfirmed sources that live in the shadows. There's He's a like, better uh, chance of a big nosed head strike mission than there is for Wing Eight. <laughs> Seriously. Hmm. I mean, honestly, shouldn't we just start calling these strike CMs Wing Eight at this point? I I feel like they deserve to be called Wing Eight. Really. They are a Both little bit together. like that, but I think there's something to be said for a raid. Okay, I I think that bosses are great, but I do think that having a um, kind of a bit of a side story lore element to it. I think moving through the environment, I think it adds a lot to the roleplay factor. I think I also think to an extent it makes it um, quite replayable because it, you have more of a speedrunning element to it, um, not yeah. just a reward component. Um, whereas with a strike mission, is there really speedrunning there? Not really, because um, it's going to come down to you know coming up with the best strategy and killing it really quickly. But that is a lot easier to exhaust than figuring out how to move through it uh, and do it as efficiently as possible with you know like the movement between the events and like min maxing all the little pre-events too so i i've uh you know i i do like raids i think they are something different to strikes i think they can coexist and both be good but i would like to see raids uh in the future as well i think if they ever do wing aids it it will definitely have an easy mode though i i don't see them going back to the to the old format where it's like a really difficult race wing that's like 90 percent of the player base will never touch i think it will be like a strike like rate if anything where it's just normal modes challenge modes keep it like that yeah look how long did we say this difficulty settings are the way to go every other mmo figured it out guild wars 2 is just finally caught up now nice <laughs> almost getting there yeah it's good i like it um, I mean, look, we've now just universally praised the new strike mission CM. It's good. I also like the norm modes as well. Now it's time for the roast. It's time for the roast. I'm going to counter roast the oh. entire chat and the community at large. Okay, I like that. Here we go. Yeah, it's good. The strike mission rewards. And actually the rewards in general for the expansion, but we'll focus on the strike missions now. They aren't good. 
I think you said all there is to be said. <laughs> there we go. They are putrid. I mean, it's true they're putrid if you also agree that the rewards for everything else in the game, end game content, besides arguably tier four fractals, is putrid. Nike's correct. I hate to say this. Like, right. like the rewards for the strike CM are the exact same as a raid boss. Like we're talking maybe 10 to 20 silver difference. So, I mean, it's in line with a raid boss, which is exactly the difficulty level of, of strike CM. So it's appropriately warded. Now you could easily say that raid bosses don't have good enough rewards. And I would agree with you, but that's sort of not the point. I mean, that's a, that's a totally different conversation. And if, and if the argument was like, we should buff raid boss rewards and buff strike CM rewards, I would also agree with you that we should do that. We should make end game instance content more rewarding than open world stuff for sure. We should definitely do that. But if the, if the strike, if people are just like, oh, the strike CM, like objectively, even compared to raid bosses has worse rewards. It's like, well, that's just not true. And, and I think the community is just, way way off base on that okay so i i agree with what you're saying as in that's race rewards are bad too and that technically it's the same um i just think that like the the badness of a two gold reward is getting kind of amplified here because of the existence of a normal mouse like um it doesn't feel like hey you do the boss and then gets one gold it feels like hey you do this three times harder version for only one gold extra and I realize it's it's like technically the same, but just that that sort of almost like psychological element to it, like, hey, I can do this easier version and I already get half, or I can do the really hard version, which is going to be a lot of effort, and then I only get one gold more. I think that's like the truly discouraging part about it. So to me, it's like raid balls for wars are already bad, but this time it feels even worse, even though technically it's not that much worse. It just feels worse. You see what I mean there? Yeah, for sure. And particularly because it's it's very, very easy to lose as well. Because um, if, if, if the fight is long, uh, it's got a high DPS check on it, um, relatively speaking. Um, there's a lot of health on the boss too. So, you know, you're going you're gonna to be there for a long time. If you die, if you die twice, you could be there for half an hour, right? Like pretty easily you could be in that instance for half an hour. And then you get... Um, you know, you get to, you get your two gold, you get your rares and some shards. That is that is very bad, right? Extremely bad. And if you're a new player trying to learn and get into that, it's even worse. It could take you hours to kill it for the first time, right? Like very easily. It could even potentially take you days. And at the end of it, you're gonna get oh man, like th this is where I really think um ah. You really run into the problem, the fact that the game is a microtransaction game when you're looking at end game rewards, because it is so hard for ArenaNet to reward the player with good skins and good items in the game itself, because if they do that, they can't sell you anything. And that is a huge problem. Um, because on the one hand, they don't really want to give you too much gold reward um, for doing this stuff because they don't want to make it so players are only doing instance content. That's another reason why they have like lockouts on this stuff. So you can't grind it over and over again, um, daily or weekly, weekly on strike missions. They don't want you only doing this because they want players in the open world so the game looks alive. But they're like, okay, well, that's okay. We can just make it so you have really cool skins like legendary armor, right? Or, or weapon skins. But they can't do that Wait, because they- what? Because they need, uh, okay, yeah, well, you, we, you, we can argue about that. But they can't really give you good skins because, yeah, if they do, that can't go in the cash shop. There's a reason why the cash shop skins are bordering on legendary tier a lot of the time. And a lot of the stuff in-game is incredibly mediocre. Uh, and the the new strike mission challenge mode is honestly the the absolute epitome of that. The reward you get for it, like the Cantha Noble Sword or whatever, it is shockingly mediocre, right? Like, it, it, it is... I, I... <laughs> uh, honestly, that skin is so bad. I would have a better opinion of the rewards if that skin wasn't one of them. Like, if that skin just was not there and it was a blank, <laughs> I would go, hey, these rewards are bet." I would rate the rewards, like, one notch higher 
than the, that skin being there. It's like an insult. <laughs> it's like someone invites you over for dinner and they serve you like Captain Crunch cereal or something like that. And you're like, wait, I thought this was like a nice dinner. And they're like, no, enjoy your Captain Crunch. Like it was <laughs> like you just think even if the rest of the dinner is nice and if the hors d'oeuvres are nice, you're like, well, there was Captain Crunch. So that fucking sucks. That was pretty low class. Like, it's just not good. It, it bring it ruins the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I have a I have a specific phrase that I like to use for things like this. Mm-hmm. It's disappointingly average. Yeah, yeah. is this it's this re- really unusual intersection of of a lot of features about Guild Wars Two. It doesn't have a sub fee. Um, it's funded by the cash shop instead, uh, and it doesn't have vertical progression because it, you know if you're in a universe where you have vertical progression, well, it's okay because you can get better items, right? You know, you you get in there. It doesn't matter if the gold sucks or if the skin sucks. Well, you're getting more powerful. Okay, number goes up. I'm happy about it. Dopamine hit secured. Awesome. Love to see it. But the problem is, is that it's actually really difficult for ArenaNet to reward the player in game because of their business model um, and because they want the game. Uh, the way they want the game to go again they, they want to really focus on this open world style content they want to make sure that the game is is accessible and i think that look you know it's funny there was a comment on oh, i need to i haven't replied to this comment and i need to actually and it was talking about um how the fact that they would hate the fact that they would that i don't think it's right that players would get left behind uh, unless they played instance content, right? And, well, I hate to tell you, you already are getting incredibly left behind by players who play instance content, um, specifically Fractals. But, um, well, and even, it's even worse than that, right? Like, this player is um, under a massive misapprehension. They're getting left behind constantly uh, by people who play the game more efficiently than them. Um, <laughs> but there, I think there would be a bit of pushback against this in the community, but, I uh, no, it's a really difficult situation, but I think it's something that they have to solve, Um I'll sum it up by saying this, I guess. I, I I genuinely think that unless they find a good way to reward players for doing this content, I think that a lot of the end game and more hardcore game modes um, in Guild Wars 2, they're always going to suffer unless there's a good incentive for doing it. It's, it's really tough. Yeah, I 100% agree. The, the, the thing that I find like strange about this is that Fractals is in a pretty good spot, schools wise. <laughs> I don't understand Dude, why, yeah. like, I, I, yeah, arguably, I, I don't understand why, like, there's such a disparity between those two. To, to me, it seems like, hey, there's all these people doing daily fractals. Um, the amount of people that's gonna do strike CMs realistically, I don't think is gonna be that high. Um, Did you hear so... that they took Mystic Coins out of Fractal CM? <laughs> <laughs> it's the first of time coins, I'm hearing about it. I was gonna no, mention. That people aren't doing this, but you trade 10 green shards from the strikes for a mystic coin. And I've you can do that. 10 per week. So, and you figure you get like 15 shards for killing uh, the, the strikes DM. So that's another gold and a half that you get that people aren't including the value that people like completely disregard the value of the shard the green shards that they're getting as they they like when you like on reddit there was a putrid post yesterday where the person said analysis of strike cm rewards versus raid rewards and i go oh this will be interesting someone's gonna like take the time to put like a gold amount on everything and and really put them side by side and make like a nice graph instead it was a bunch of words and there was no gold amounts mentioned it was just like it, the guy was measuring the rewards by feels per second and feels per hour rather Ooh. than gold per hour. Ooh, and yeah. that's definitely not the way you want to do it. You do not want to go by feels per hour. So if you actually look at the value of the green shards, the which are like, what is it? One, one gold for every 10, roughly. Like that's, that's pretty decent uh, compared to the raid shards, which are worth quite a bit less than that, actually. I think the trick there is though that like you can just get those ten mystic coins every week by running like I think like one clear of the normals and then like a couple of deities. So to to me it's just about this incentive to make you go to the challenge mode instead of the normal modes. Yeah. So I mean, that's this was like 
This was, uh, again, I have to say, Teapot wrong again. Uh, he advocated for easy modes with all full rewards. And here we are living in that world where easy mode players get all the rewards that the challenge mode players get. And, and here we go. Don't, people don't want to do the challenge mode. Here we go again. Teapot wrong. Well, I, I know I, what I was saying is I, I probably wouldn't have gone that far. I would say that I would be okay with that. And I am okay with that from, but that's only from my perspective. Um, I don't care about rewards whatsoever. I just care that the content exists. Um, obviously I do want people to engage with it and have a good reason to do so. I think you can do that in other ways than gold per hour, but I would always say that um, the the key with the challenge mode is make it more uh make it more gold per hour right like make it really good to actually farm this when i'm talking about um easy mode players can get all the rewards i mean all the skins because again i i don't i don't care about that at all um and i know that makes me a bit of a weirdo in guild wars 2 um but i think that's probably the way that guild wars 2 has to go where um engaging and challenging content essentially gives you um uh, essentially gives you a uh, a farming advantage, right? That you can you can speed yourself up, you can accelerate your progress rather than that. Easier to say you don't care about rewards when you have everything. I have never cared about rewards. I have uh, deleted legendaries on stream. I have given away over two million gold um, over the course of my career. Um, you can you can disagree with my statement, but you can't um, say that I don't care because I very obviously don't, and my actions dictate that, my friend. Um, if I got permanently banned, I would actually not care, weirdly enough. Um, I would just start playing the next day on a fresh account, and it wouldn't really bother me that much. It would be inconvenient, but it wouldn't really be the end of the universe. But anyway, slight sidetrack there. Yeah, that would be my position on that. Um, I just think that the, you know, the, the real key is, is that ultimately, ArenaNet seems to refuse, refuse to acknowledge the fact, um, that they, they don't accept that the game essentially boils down to gold per hour. Um, and that's a natural consequence of, of, again, the way the reward structure is set up is that if you want legendaries, you need gold. If you want any skin in the game, you need gold. You're always going to have this pressure on you to farm um, currency in order to purchase things. And if certain areas of the game have this and other areas of the game don't it's never going to be worth going into these right um for a lot of players the opportunity cost is just way too high there's there's no carrot on the end of the stick there's just the stick um for this stuff so i think that that has to be looked at and, and i think lara makes a really good point with fractals because fractals are exactly this and that's on a daily lockout not even on a um not even a weekly lockout daily you have this stuff where you can farm basically the best gold per hour in the game and cms you know like i know that there's a bit of a you know, I, I know that people aren't the, the biggest fan of the changes but cms are still definitely worth doing every day um if you uh you know if you can do that efficiently and one shot them it's still good gold proud to do that um not as good as it used to be obviously but it's still pretty decent but yeah I, I just think that strike cms need to be in that position as well um and strike missions in general like strike missions should be some of the best gold per hour in the game uh, even the norm modes the cm should obviously be even better uh i i'm a little confused with why they didn't think about this um i mean i, I think in general the rewards in end of dragons were very unfinished right i mean obviously they added way more afterwards right? i mean like look think about dragon's end it went from getting absolutely nothing to getting an, an antique summoning stone right so that's pretty good um but yeah this this is a big hole I, I think this is a huge vulnerability in strikes right now and probably a good part of why they don't have the crazy player uptake that i imagine arena was looking for yeah the the thing to me is like um i feel like if it would let, let's just imagine that you would gold you would get one gold from the normal mouse and then doing the challenge mouse would give you four i think that would like encourage way more people to go do it um, there's a lot of people who go do like the the weekly race wing that does got like double rewards and they specifically go do that one. Um, and I don't really get why they don't because like wing seven has been in the game for like over two years at this point, almost I think it's been three years even. And they've got this bonus where the newest race wing <laughs> always has the double reward bonus. So wing seven has been in the game for like I think like three years, giving like four goals parade balls and. That doesn't seem to be a problem, like from an economy standpoint. I, I'm not an economist. I don't know how that stuff works, but 
it looks like Wing 7 always having been four goals hasn't, you know, catastrophically affected the game. And it just feels like such a shame. They design these really cool fights that's, that are, like, really engaging. And th the, basically the incentive to go do them over the normal mode is one goal. Um, you are completely correct. It is two goals if you go do them. Y you might as well do the challenge mode if you can, because you just get more rewards for it. But I just want it to be higher to get people to be like, hey, I'm doing the normal mode. Let's maybe try doing the challenge mode because then I get more goals. And and like people are saying, that's kind of what this game boils down to. Everyone wants their goals. Everyone wants to make their legendaries. So I don't, I just don't get why they put it at like one extra goal. Um, it it feels like they're shooting themselves in the foot with that. Um, which I find such a shame because, like I said, I think this is one of the most engaging fights they've done in years. And it's like, hey. You get less goals from this one than if you go do Wing Seven, <laughs> because those bosses will give you four goals. Um, so yeah, I just... yeah, they should have uh, nerfed fractals harder. They should have <laughs> changed it from daily T fours to weekly tier fours. Oh, so then oh. you only do fractals once a week. Oh. But then you take, <laughs> yeah, but then you take the yeah. gold from that and you make strike CMs like four <laughs> or five gold weekly per each, and uh, that would solve the, the reward problem and it would encourage people to do fractal or strike cms and it would simultaneously make the fractal players cry which we can all agree is very entertaining and well, something make, we like to see it would make a lot of them quit too which i'm yeah I'm another wait, 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 zero <laughs> zero loss, zero loss. Player. this is how i make my gold okay i i i feel i feel attacks over here right now my gold Yearly oh, you know the, you know the we're just, we're just all gonna about. do only drizzle boots and dragon I, be fall I believe Grim Jack agrees with me, and considering <laughs> he is the best player in the fractal game mode, he would he would know. Just so everyone knows that was they're, they're joking, guys. Okay. No, Please. Uh, yeah. no. half bad. joking, maybe. I'm never going on this podcast again. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, it it is it is weird to me, especially when, you know, a lot of other areas of the game are pretty rewarding, specifically like the open world. The open world, you can get really good gold per hour by farming the events. And yes, I'm aware that not everyone gets that gold per hour. Yes, I know that most players probably get like five to 10 gold per hour, whereas like the the kind of the theoretical number is more like 20 to 30 or even more than that sometimes. But the thing is, is that that's actually irrelevant because if you take those same players who aren't playing open world efficiently, they're not going to play instance content efficiently either, right? So they're, they're still going to have that reduced goal per hour. Um, I, it, it does... The, the only reason I can think that they they do it this way is because they don't want players to continuously farm instance content but I, I feel like you kind of prevent that with lockouts right with weekly lockouts so you you know you just do your raids or strike missions um weekly and then you go back to like playing open world or stuff like that and even fractals are daily like strike missions and ice Ridge saga are daily i think you can get around that by doing that i guess when you add loads of strike missions down the line it will get even more rewarding but weirdly enough it actually is the opposite already. They've already guarded against this because they made a lot of the purchases weekly. You know, those Mystic Coins, that's not going to scale as more strike missions get added to the game. There will be a point where doing loads of strike missions is just kind of bad um, because you aren't going to be able to get value out of those um, Mystic Coins for that too. Oh, it, it's weird. This is the only thing that really worries me about the future of instance content in in, in the game. Well, right? th there'll be different color shards. Will yeah. there though? I think next, I think, yeah, I think the green shards are going to be for EOD only. And then when we get to Living Story Season 6, it's going to be like, you know, like the red, red, shards. red shards and then probably like, who knows, white shards or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm very concerned. I'm really concerned about this because um, you might go, wow, imagine not playing the game for fun. Ooh, imagine not doing it because of not enough pixels but the reality of the situation is is that players have goals and they're going to take the the best path they can to accomplish those goals and right now it's almost never kind of correct as it were it's never the correct decision to play instance content that isn't fractals right like unless you want the turtle and you can see that reflected in the stats as well like the uh kainang overlook is the most popular strike mission um because of the turtle being there the, the turtle is locked and hey i've got to give some respect to anet for actually um 
a hole in their own there and not removing it. I, I thought they would, actually. I thought they'd move it to, like, my train or something like that. But they didn't. Uh, they stuck with it and kept going on that. But, yeah, it, it does worry me. I think this is something that needs to be re fixed. It needs to be fixed. Otherwise, hardcore content or even kind of the entry-level um, instance content, it will always struggle to thrive uh, and it will struggle to grow because players will do it once and they'll have no real reason to do it again and actually grow the scene, which it obviously then spirals into if you don't have enough players, the LFG is dead, um, the, the guilds don't grow, you don't have communities forming around it, like you farm this content, you grind this content and you're just you're dead in the water again right like it, it, much like um razor right uh right now and i don't want that fate for strikes because i do feel that strike missions are a bit of a this has to work it needs to work otherwise we aren't really going to get anything like that ever again uh but i don't know there's my doomer take <laughs> i've been brought down I've, i'm deflating guys uh yes it's it's like an easily fixable doomer take though <laughs> like um when I sold over voice, I was pretty disappointed, but I was like, at least the fight is good. You know, like if the fight wasn't good, that would be like an actual, like really huge, unfixable problem for the most part. But like, the rewards feels like something they could just easily adjust. Um, I'm not sure if they want to though, but it, it seems like something that would just be like, hey, change some numbers around, and now suddenly you got, you fixed the biggest problem. So, doesn't seem super doomer yet. Yeah. I think they should just remove fractals from the game. <laughs> Why are you baiting uh, the YouTube comments? Because <laughs> you if you I, do actually you. No. You do uh, know that people are going to take that seriously. Good. You know when you said yeah, make it weekly, people are going to assume that you were actually. Serious. I do want them to do that. Yeah. That's Wait, real. what? Actually, Wait, no, why? That was Wait, real. Why do you want that? That would be terrible. That would be make this an apocalypse. <laughs> I can like hear the YouTube yeah. comments being hyped. Because no, you can because... redo them if you want. You're only going to get like a few blues and greens and maybe like <laughs> yeah, for sure. Some yes, shards. absolutely. Absolutely. Or you can do wrecks every day, but you can't oh, do the uh, the wreck. Yeah, the, yeah. The, I like that. Why would why? What was what's the motive? Because there? I want the gatekeepers out. I want them gone. <laughs> I want them gone. I want them out of the game, and that's the best way to do it. Because all the gatekeepers, all the little cretins that fucking sit there and tell people that they're not allowed to do content, they're all in T4 Fractal LFGs. All of them. That's where they all are. And if you make the rewards weekly, they go play Final Fantasy because that's what they want to do anyways. That's what they really want to be doing. Those people really want to be playing Final Fantasy, but they have Fractal God, and so they're facing the sunk cost fallacy. So I just want them to fuck off. Just make the rewards weekly easy. And you know what? This is the real take. This is the real fix to all of it. To be able to do Fractals, you have to unlock it by doing CM Strike missions. <laughs> what? We get the fractured, the fractured we were 2.0. We get leaderboards this time. And to be able to do fractals, you have to do all the other in game content first. And then you can unlock it. And then you can do fractals. You have to do they Doom reset CM everyone's for... level. Yeah, exactly. You have to do Doom CM. They reset everyone's level. They add the leaderboard. This is the perfect solution. Oh, if, if you bring up resetting the levels, you'll trigger inks. He will flip the fuck out. You can't, you can't mention <laughs> resetting fractal levels. I'd make it character bound again. And see, see, I was oh. I was serious up to a point, but you don't know where that point is. So that's exactly. for no the one YouTube knows. comments. That's yeah. for the YouTube comments to, to fight about and decide <laughs> at what point I, I stop I stop being serious. I oh, do well. want the leaderboard for Fractal. Like, they need a revamp. I, I ain't it should hire me as a consultant to fix fractals, like for real. Yeah. Like I I would make it would be so fun if if I was in charge of fractals. Like it would be it would be huge. It would be very good. Bigly. Okay. Okay. I'd be very upset if this happens. Very upset. Wow. I like my dailies. What if I, they what, hire I you? would keep you could have all the dailies you want. I would change the structure of fractals entirely so that like it was just to a totally different like the the incentives and the reward structure was totally different. It would be about progressing rather than like farming some face roll easy shit for twenty gold. And then, like, pretending you're, like, super good at the game. 
I do, I want to make a comment, but I don't think I can. I actually think I can't make it. Like, but yeah, I'll just refrain. <laughs> How do we feel about um the strike missions being weekly lockouts in general? I'm not the biggest fan of it. Yeah, I don't like that. They should be daily. Yeah, because I, I, I think I guess there is a daily. There's like a random daily strike mission every day. That's pretty cool. Um, but the, what what worries me about this is the fact that um. There's no reason whatsoever to raid or do a strike mission after you've done it for the week. Like, there's literally no reason. And that, I, I don't like that because it means that um, players will just do it once and then never interact with the system whatsoever. So you end up with like a spike of players doing it on reset and then no one does it for the rest of the week, which makes it harder to find groups. It means that you take all, because it, 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 it's even worse than it sounds. Because what it means is, is that all the tryhards, right, do it on Monday and then boom, they're never going to interact ever again, right, um, at that point. And... That sucks. I think it's really good when there's um, a good reason for experienced players to continuously engage with the system because it means that you increase the um, kind of like the uh, the overall quality of groups and the win rate of those groups. And funny enough, this is actually statistically um, uh, demonstrable as well. If you go to Guild Wars 2 Wingman, there's actually uh, really cool information about this. Uh, and it tells you uh, the, win the am amount of groups that raid um, on every day of the week, right, Monday, Tuesday, right, and so on, and it tells you the win rate of those groups, and what do you know, around double the amount of groups raid on Monday, and as the week goes on, the win rate actually declines as well, um, so the longer you go through, there's a little spike on Sunday, it's really, I love this, because everyone can relate to this too, it's so funny, there's a little spike in groups and win rate on Sunday, because everyone's like, oh shit, it's reset, and I missed out a boss, fuck, I've got to go and do it now, so people come back at the end of the week just to try and get a few last minute clears, uh, as well but that's a big problem and you're going to see the same thing with strike missions um but i i really don't envy arena in trying to unravel this because again it, it's so linked into their business model they can't have players farming too much gold and getting too much stuff for um actually playing the game because they need you to uh, buy gold right they need you to buy gems which essentially is gold in a way and then you'll purchase you know things on the cash out with it so it's really tough um it's it's hard to design content that will be rewarding for players uh, and also won't completely delete the economy uh, or fuck over their uh, game uh, business model Model, or also screw over open world right it, it's it's a tough meme and make everyone big mad they don't want you to earn more than 30 gold an hour doing anything because they know that you will at some point get impatient for the legendary and break out the credit card when you're like let's say the legendary is 3,000 gold you'll have like you'll be grinding for two months and have like 2,000 gold and you'll just be like, fuck it. I'm swiping for the last thousand gold. I want my legendary today, damn it. And that's what you'll do. And you'll do it. And that's what they count on. This year, if I'm like quite as pessimistic, because, you know, fractals does exist, right? It's, we do it's... have Dragonfall. We do have Drizzlewood. There are, there are like good farms in the game. Is yeah, but the best farm in the game is still a hundred hours per legendary. Yeah, that's definitely true. Like, I, and for me, as someone who like has like played PoE and stuff, a hundred hours for a legendary for like best in slot gear doesn't seem that crazy. But like, I don't know. I think that's a that's a and the average player is probably a lot less than twenty gold an hour or thirty gold an hour. So it's probably more like five hundred hours for a legendary for the average player. Oh yeah. If yeah, not more. And, and since they have eight jobs, 20 kids, you know, and they play for 45 milliseconds a day, that 500 hours will take them three eternities to finish. But then would like slightly buffing the strike challenge most be that catastrophic for it though? It wouldn't. Or even just like daily strikes like, like we were talking about. I don't think that would even be that much of an impact. Maybe daily strikes would actually be both. Yeah, instead like, of nerfing so fractals again, they could take the gold from the bobble farm and add that, <laughs> nerf that, and add that gold to strikes since everything has to be zero sum. Yeah, I think it all comes back to the fact that they want to 
they want to not rock the boat too much. And I, I respect this. They, cause if they, if all of a sudden, like the best goal in the game is doing all this challenging content, that's going to ruffle a few feathers for sure. It's like, wait a minute. Okay. I thought this was our game. Okay. This was our game. Um, and they also want to make sure that the game is open world focused. I like, imagine if, imagine if, it turns out that, well, you know what the really weird thing about this is that no, I disagree with myself because this isn't true, is it? The best farm in the game is instanced by far, and it's not even close, actually. Um, Specifically, the Fractal 42 farm or whatever it is these days, it does change around sometimes. That is easily the best farm in the game. And you don't have flocks of people doing it, right? You don't have like this infestation of everyone spamming Fractal 42, right? Um, all over the place. People in general still play the open world, even though it isn't actually the most efficient way of playing the game. I, I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to figure out what's going on there. I'm trying to peer inside the mind of a read net, but it's not working. Uh, my vision is is occluded. I'm blind. How much How much gold per hour do you make doing the 42 farm? I think it's actually a lot. It's like 50, 50 plus, I think. Might be more than that. I think it's, it's really high. Where does it come from? Uh, the encryptions. Okay. Yep. And all the junk as well. You get like a bunch of shit. And you need frat. You do, that is true. You do need fractal God and you do have to do it well. But if you think about it, that's okay, right? Like, if you have to play correctly, you have to, um, like, have, you know, you know, some good speed doing it, right? You've got the pace, you've got the memes. But even if you don't have Fractal God, it would still be, like, 40 plus, right? So it wouldn't be bad. And yeah, you have to play well. But this is kind of what I mean, right? Like, even if you have this endgame stuff be really rewarding, it's okay. It won't, like, draw everyone away because you're going to need to execute it well, right? For example, raids. I mean, <laughs> I, I guess I'm kind of memeing myself here a little bit, but raids are actually pretty well they're me they're okay gold per hour like if you do raids really quickly you get a good amount of gold for doing them um you know if you can if you can clear in under three hours that's pretty decent but again the amount of guilds that can actually do that is extremely low and you're never doing that in a pug group right it's just not going to happen but yeah i think that you know if you put a lot of effort into the game you should be rewarded for it. I don't think that's a very controversial opinion. Effort in, you go really try hard, you get a good group, you get these strike missions farmed every week or every day or whatever with your raids. You should get a bunch of gold. And if you don't do that, um, you're going to be sad. Big sads. Yeah. Ooh. Apparently, um, without fractal gold, it's about uh, half the rewards. Ooh, okay. In that case, yeah, that makes sense then. That does make sense. So Ouch. that yeah. Yeah, that oh, is wow. a bit of an edge. Yeah, so that means that, yeah, that's the reason. I guess that's a big reason then. I wonder if a lot yeah, of people just would. Swipe. I wonder if a lot of people would actually, um, would actually do this than if it was, if you didn't need Fractal God. You are rewarded, you just don't like the reward. No, this is a thing though. You, 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 you're saying that, okay, but you're, you, you know that that isn't true. Um, the rewards you get for a lot of instance content are kind of worthless to um, most players. Most players have a goal in mind and they want to farm towards that goal. Uh, and therefore, a lot of the rewards in, in this content are kind of useless. They don't really do anything um, for a lot of players. Thicker when the skins aren't good. Get them unique skins, same level as the gem store. Yeah, I've got really bad news for you. Um, they can't do that. They will never do that um, because uh, they can't sell. They're not going to generate revenue from that. And and that's that's not me criticizing Arena or flaming them. That's me describing their business model. It, it's not not quite the same thing. It's not going to happen. You will never see. Um, you will never see skins like that that can't be traded. Um, and the problem is, if you make them tradable, then you don't need to do the content that doesn't cause players to engage with that content, right? I guess you could increase the gold per hour by having these rare drops that you could then sell. That might be the way to go here. Because um, then you can have some good skins. Because again, anything that um, you can sell on the trading post is good because it means you can buy it with real money. Um, <laughs> we're delving into some serious cynicism here, but it's also the reality of the do situation. You, uh, do you remember the Stormbow drama? Um, Stormbow drama. I mean, I, I'm aware of the Stormbow. I mean, what was it? It had a custom bowstring. Yeah. And the legendary bows did not have a Ooh, custom bowstring. That's interesting. And people were pissed. And there was also this Reddit post that was kind of, that I think turned out to be fake, 
about how the Stormbow was supposed to be a legendary weapon, but they just put it in the gym store instead and did something else for the... What's the other... What's the longbow? Faris. Uh, okay. And then there's a uh, Kudzu. But yeah, those didn't have... It was there was drama over the bowstring and how the one in the gym store had a custom string and like animation and shit, and then the legendaries didn't, and so they went back and retroactively added custom strings to all the bows. It was really amusing. <laughs> yeah, that, was, kinda... that was that was the first time that I think the gym store skins really power crept the rest of the skins because the envoy staff came out. There was the Stormbow. There were other ones, and they were just like huge improvements over over all of the other skins in the game at the time. They were vastly superior. The thing is, though, I think um, besides this gold, there's always been like different sort of like carrots on the other side of the stick. Like Ray said, like legendary armor, right? That was a reason for people to want to do raids. We had like. Uh, Adds infinitum and fractals. We had like a vision for like pop of fire rates. I think if there was just um something like that at the end of like strikes and strike CMs, that, that might honestly make a big difference as well. Just like having something you farm towards, like every week you get some currency and then you almost get there. Like it doesn't necessarily have to even be a goal towards. Um like we're we're talking a lot, we're very cynical right now about like all this stuff where it's like, oh, they can't really do too much rewards because can't like compete with the gem store too much because uh you know legendaries aren't in the gem store i guess like tier one legendaries and the new ones you can technically like gems to goals but a lot of these like trinkets and, and armor you can only guess by playing certain game modes and that's something that strikes cms is kind of missing right now just something to uh to like that's i think that's the real thing i'm missing i don't even care that much about the gold i just want something that gets me to do like yeah i want to do this every week uh, should because have been legendary this week... food, that, that <laughs> legendary been food, legendary aqua breather from Strike Mission. Legendary there we go. That, the aqua breather would be like a negative, uh, yeah, carrot. That would be like, a, like a carrot that hasn't been washed. Oh, th just like... check this out. Look, there's actually a forum post here. Bring legendaries to the gem store, just like China servers have it. Come on, ain't it? Oh, this is a good post. Legendaries are hard <laughs> to like, check this post out. This was actually posted. Um, wait, this was on Monday. This is a recent post. Holy shit. Um, uh, legendaries are hard to acquire, I find, and putting it on the gem store would be a great idea, I think. Chinese players already have access to this, and I think it would be a great addition to Guild Wars 2 on NA, and also bring them a lot of profit. <laughs> Some players don't have time to make a legendary and work a lot, so doing this would make it easy to access them. Anet, consider my post and look into this. I would definitely buy some, if not all of them. Ain't I should ban that guy. Wow. Well, what about honestly. the what about the what about the line at the bottom though? There's a line at the bottom. Wait, what's the line at the bottom? If not, oh well, lol. Maybe one day I will find time to actually craft them. Latas. <laughs> Wait, is this trolling? I mean, oh, this is a troll. I mean, post. it might be. I don't know, dude. Like that is that is a troll. I have post. I have news for them. Actually, uh, there are. If you will, third-party gem stores. Oh, whoa, 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 no, 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 you know, we, you know, we we talked about like um, legendary armor and legendary weapons, but even that, in a way, actually funnels into the same system because you have to buy the materials, right? Like, um, yeah, there are some things that you have to do the collections to actually obtain these things, but they're still very expensive, right? You still need like two k gold, um, yeah. to make something like this. So it's it's still ultimately this this is why gold is so important because you can say, oh, you can get your legendary armor, nice. Yeah, how are you going to get the two k gold? Because you're not getting it from raids, um, and if you do that with with um. Uh, strike missions is where are you getting the gold from like where are you getting your 2k gold you're not getting it from strikes um i think that's weird right i think that there is a bit of a of a disconnect here um with the way the reward structures work uh but yeah i uh, don't know legendaries in the gem store this guy needs to learn about i want buying the plus 25 gold. infusions in the gem store oh yeah. hell something yeah. that big i mean technically anything that's on a tp is technically kind of in a gem store yeah, oh, like yeah definitely no, absolutely. oh yeah i have a proposition mm -hmm. 
Apple has a credit card and you get like 5% cash back whenever you buy an Apple thing with it. What if Guild Wars 2 and ArenaNet partnered with a bank for a Guild Wars 2 credit card and you got cash back on buying gems? How much money do you think they would make from that? <laughs> They're not doing that. that. That's like on the level of they add like a cryptocurrency to the game. <laughs> I mean, that's technically believable. I mean, like, every fucking shitty store in the mall has their own credit card. You can get, like, a yeah. Gap credit card or, like, a yeah, Kohl's yeah, yeah. credit card. Like, every store has, has credit, has, like, credit cards. So they should, de they could definitely do that. I don't even have a credit card. That's I don't. Responsible. I don't yeah. have any anymore. You're off the grid. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. <laughs> yeah. Oh no! I think we, we've we've clobbered the. It's not even a dead horse. We just like reduce it to like a pulp, right? You know, it's just like a red mush on the ground. That's the rewards discussion. Uh, but you know what? In another, you know, you know what else is a really good reward, guys? Surfshark VPN. No, um, actually, infusions, <laughs> infusions, guys. Uh, in in Guild Wars Two, and this is like a completely random thing that I just thought of, and I'm changing the topic to something completely unrelated to everything that we're talking about. Um, so let's go. Uh, <laughs> Something that I've been thinking about recently, and I've, I've talked about it on stream a few times, I'm super curious what you guys think about this. How about if ArenaNet made infusions and put them in the wardrobe system and started pushing those as like a key in-game reward that you get for playing the game? Because that seems yes. to be... Something that doesn't actually overlap with a gem store because there aren't any gem store infusions. Uh, they are definitely desired, right? People go, ooh, infusions. Ooh, check. Ooh, nice. So, what if they did that? So, players encounter the system. It's also, look, perfect time to rework Agony Resistance 2 because they're all bound into infusions because it's weird. What are we thinking? I think just putting them in the wardrobe would make like a huge difference because yeah, they i don't even know most infusions i don't even know what they look like so i just i just don't care about them i i know a couple of them but just like being able to like see them and being like i can get this one and this one and this one fantastic um they sort of try to do that with chairs right like the the thing with race was like oh if you do all the challenge modes if you get all the shim you get a chair um that was honestly kind of cool i kind of like that so if they do something similar with infusions that would actually be pretty awesome I would like that. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. I think the way it would work is um is it wouldn't be like one infusion per character, it would be like one type of infusion per character. So I'm not a super infusion expert, but as I understand it, there's like you can have a there's like a glowy thing you can have. You can have like a, a skin effect that like you can turn into a, a you know like the stone dwarf style thing. You can have like an outline. Um, is that all the categories of infusions? I think well you know you get the idea there right. You'd probably have like one per type category of infusion. So you'd have multiple of them, but it would be um, you wouldn't be able to stack like all of the same type all in one go. Yeah, the swipers that hang out in Crystal Oasis for the pinata that have like 10 different confetti infusions for like maximum spam, they would be in shambles because they'd only get one confetti. Complete shambles. Yeah. Unlucky. You can't stack the shack and flex on people anymore. It's fine. Yeah, Anyone and with multiple shacks is a duper anyway, or at least benefited <laughs> from duper. <laughs> I wish I got in on that. Oh my gosh. Do you though? I've been trying to get banned for years. <laughs> and that's probably the only way it was going to happen. I missed out. I missed my chance. <laughs> yeah. Any dupers in the chat? Is any Cassiano fans about the place? Okay. You love I'm gonna, to see I'm going to put that in my, sn my Snow Crows application that I'm you, not a dupe. You, oh. <laughs> well, you're going to fail then. Uh, no, okay, that, that was mean. Okay, I, I'm saying that, that was that was too far. Okay, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's it's funny that you know it, rewards of something that I have not really thought about, and, and you know for for a very long time because it's just not something that I'm super interested in. But I, I think that now with Ender Dragons coming out, it, I think it's really brought it to the forefront of the discussion. Um, 
and it's very clear the impact they have on the game it, it's a fun thing to talk about just from like a a game design standpoint um i, I think there are am, am i wrong though i feel like that there have been is there any area of the game that people don't complain about not being rewarding people don't complain about fractals monthly at players people happy. don't complain about fractals didn't you have a whole podcast that was just complaining about fractals but not about the rewards that was about the game yeah the mystic coins are you crazy were you even there the i mean the for sure but that that wasn't actually because of the reward though you know let, let's put our you know our, our good faith hats on here people were upset because it screwed over exactly hardcore players and it was the it was the final thing in a long line of things that targeted exactly hardcore players no one else was affected by this right a tiny segment of the community got fucked again and again and again right and yeah that doesn't feel that good you know that's why people were upset about it rather than the the actual reward i mean most of those players are incredibly wealthy um anyway because they've just been playing fractals for so long <laughs> but yeah i don't know like rewards in guild wars 2 are always a bit weird i, I think either you know what's weird even in the open world because whenever i make like a video talking about gold people go man i never feel rewarded by this game it's confusing it's complicated i don't understand it takes me ages to farm anything it's a bit weird um I, I think we're it's almost going on to another so it's time to have another entirely separate podcast about this at this point i suppose but yeah I, i'm just, I'm just kind of uh, rambling at this point i'm just just meandering off just thinking aloud because it's something that i have started to i have allocated some of my mind to think about it okay normally pff, rewards listen i play for fun i'm not a i don't play for pixels guys imagine playing for pixels but now i'm forced to think about it i'm forced to contemplate this well, I will say this. The best thing you can do as a Guild Wars 2 player is get a full legendary armory so that you can become a four fun gamer. Because once you have the full legendary armory, mm. almost nothing means any... No reward means very much. It, it honestly doesn't matter. So then you can ascend. You have At, at that point, when you, when you get the full legendary armory, you've reached the end of the first like chapter of Guild Wars 2. And you can either quit and go, I've done everything and I'm done. Or you can become a four fun transcendent gamer. Or you can become a crybaby who says he needs another, a new carrot, a new treadmill to chase after. And those are your three options. And I recommend people ascend or quit because those are the two less annoying options. But what about fitting your infusion wardrobe, though? Hey, that's fun. Oh. They should max that one out after. What if Probably they not, because took... some of those are ugly as hell. Like the stone skin <laughs> one, like, no thanks. Well, you can, here. here's a thought. You can get the stone skin one with DRM tokens, right? That's how you get it, isn't it? Yeah, it's terrible. It is. What if, there's this crazy thing that you know now that now that i think about it it's like strikes and raids and fractals and dungeons they all have tokens and they're all in-game content and what if you could just trade those tokens in for a gift and you get enough gifts and you put them in the mystic forge and then you get a random in-game infusion maybe you get a chalk maybe you get a pinata maybe you get a void infusion who knows wouldn't that just feel horrible though like when you roll that the shitty infusion three times in a row po polysaturated orange infusion or whatever you're like six gold you just put all your gifts and you've been grinding and you just you get nothing and those would also be pay to win because you could get the Tyrion exchange vouchers oh to uh oh yeah i yeah. like that so that'd be that'd be big nice I think this is probably a good place to kind of wrap things up a little bit. Uh, oh yeah, one bonus me. I forgot to say this during the strike discussion, but DPS checks are really important in endgame content, guys. Uh, because if you don't have DPS checks, uh, fucking it up and playing really badly doesn't matter. Uh, because execution, you can survive very easily just by stacking loads of healers, and you can play really badly and still win. DPS checks makes you play well.
completely unrelated, but I just forgot to say that. Um, so just pretend that it's we're talking about strikes now, and uh, there you go. Slot that idea in. But I think that'll just about do it, actually. I, I, tea time's over. Right? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm wait, done. Wait, I'm wait, done. Wait, wait, no, we're all out. <laughs> cut. Cut. Okay, no, go. Uh, awesomeness. Yes, the low APM submissions are open till midnight tonight. Uh, I am planning for midnight CST. But I'm probably just going to go ahead and stay up until 2 a.m. CST, which will be midnight ANET time. So, yeah, uh, you you still have the rest of this day and the evening to do that. Yeah, Inco, it's the last day to submit. Oops. Yeah, go you better do it. Uh, get, your, get your stuff in. Get your last minute submissions in. Get that gold easy. Yeah, yes. Submit. submit. <laughs> do it. Get your community, yes. uh, community hero, community hero. Get yep. your gold. Get your memes. Let's do it. Everyone anyway. in chat, submit. Ooh, ooh. What? What is it? Are you looking to write some notes down there? I guess. Um, yeah, I, I want. I want to know who who's a little piggy and needs needs to uh, pay up. <laughs> All right, now things are getting weird. Uh, but anyway, time to wrap up. That'll about do it. Um, I've managed to keep tea time under two hours. That's actually a big life goal of mine. So this will be the last podcast ever, actually. But um, anyway, thank you all um, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the show here today. Some intense, interesting discussions, I think. Very important for the future of Guild Wars 2. And honestly, uh, need some more exploration, I think. You know, we can look, this is the new thing. This is basically talking about easy mode in raids. This is talking about, uh, what, uh, what was the thing that we would always talk about? Ah, yeah, the five target versus ten target. Oh, Yes, this is yeah. our new thing. Rewards, you better be ready for it, guys. Every single week, two-hour reward discussion on Tea Time. Yes, let's go. I've got loads of content now. But anyway, I'm joking. Don't worry. I, I actually don't really want to talk about it that much. But anyway, gamers, it's time to wrap things up. There's a lot, bunch of people here. Look, it's me. It's Nike. It's Lara. It's Brazil. It's Preston. They're the same person, though. Um, thank you guys for coming on. I really appreciate it. An excellent show. As usual, it was a pleasure to have you here. Uh, and before we go, it's time to sell out. Okay, it's selling out time. You know what? I'm mixing it up. Uh, Brazil, you're going first. Uh, Apologize to YouTube for baiting them so hard earlier on today. Or double down. It's entirely up to you. Uh, I just want to I just want to apologize. Actually, I'll go ahead and apologize. I'll take the high road. I want to apologize for your low IQ score and being oh, unable to interpret my ah. genius, my absolute supreme genius. You're groveling at my at my feet. You can't even understand the words coming out of my my mouth because my IQ is so high. I'm going to second Brazil and say that I can't wait for all the broken English, barely oh, literate no. comments oh, no. <laughs> flaming me in Brazil. Uh, people that obviously are such bad communicators. They have no ability to detect sarcasm uh, because they probably were exposed to lead paint as kids and they have fried neural synapses and they'll be hitting up the YouTube comments shortly. Can't wait. Yo, yo, YouTube commenters. <laughs> I actually like you. You should like, you should, yeah, you should check out my stuff. You're, I, I'm on your side. Okay. Don't listen to these other two. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name's Preston, and uh, <laughs> you can you can find me at underworldvideo.com and check out my photography. Uh, more stuff is coming soon. There's a big update in the pipes. Uh, you can check me out on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, UWV underscore Preston. To find all my stuff, you can stalk me. It's a little bit dead right now because the weather's been shit, but it's good now. So we're getting back to work. But yeah, I would I would love it if you would follow me and if you would buy all of my artwork and give me all of your money so I can once again just be superior to all the YouTube commenters. But that's it. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's something. Uh Nike. Okay, enemy of the fractal players. What are you up yeah. to these days? Uh these days, like uh I've been doing some raid cells in Guild Wars 2. And I've been playing a lot of Guild Wars 1 the last couple of weeks because currently we are in the Guild Wars 1 anniversary celebration of which I made a, a YouTube video about. If you are a longtime player of Guild Wars 2 and you've not played Guild Wars 1, you should definitely treat yourself to uh, some classic gaming. 
and uh, check out my uh, video that went up this week on Guild Wars 1 anniversary uh, celebration where there's unique FOMO rewards that you can't Ooh. get any other time of the year. Oh, nice. So you have to get in there and farm. Get in the mix. Very good stuff. Go check that out, of course. Extra Trunk hosts in the chat. Okay. Oh, no. Extra Trunk host hosts. Look at all those links. Look at them all. The bots posting them. Definitely click on them. And they'll be in the YouTube comments. Uh, and they'll be underneath the stream as well. Wow. How crazy is that? And final guest. Okay. Trying to dodge the bullets. Okay. It is <laughs> Lara, friend of the fractal players ally you of know, the if, fractals if you like fractals i'm on your side you should follow me and definitely not those other people i also like comments on youtube i appreciate all of them even if you say my video is bad i'm still happy you're there okay now uh you can find me on youtube i've, I've actually been doing this thing where i post one video every week i'm trying to be like people's and, and post regularly it's it's, oh, it's hard it is hard it's, it is a difficult. challenge I'm like juggling things right now. Um, and also stream over at Twitch TV Session Rancy. And we do fractals. And <laughs> we like that we get gold every time. And it's, it's great. I really like it. Please give that, me more yeah. gold for strikes. Yeah, that would be cool as well. But yes. Check out my oh, stuff. Man. Thanks for having me on, uh, on the podcast. Hey, I really appreciate everyone showing up. And of course, take a look at all those wonderful guests. Okay. Check out those links. Get in there and have a look. Okay. I am also, you know what? I, um, I'm just going to um, fence it, okay? Because I can't take any more, right? I'm fragile, uh, and if the comments beat me, I will uh, crumble, right? And I will deflate. Uh, so, I love all of you. I love all players in Guild Wars 2, uh, and that is why you should uh, subscribe. You should follow my stream. You should come and watch my stream every day. You should uh, watch all my videos. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Leave nice comments. Let us know what you thought of this tea time. Of course, look... Listen, for those of you for the first time here, okay, on Tea Time, uh, we like to banter around a little bit. You know, we like, you know, like a little bit of a little bit of memory, you know, a little bit of silliness sometimes. Okay, we like a little bit of a bit of a cut and thrust when it comes to some arguments and some conversations. We like to keep it interesting. But anyway, um, that is just going to be about it for this Tea Time. I'll be streaming after this as well a little bit so we can discuss the aftermath right of what just happened there but uh for the tea time thank you so much for watching really hope you enjoyed the show and we hope to see you next time thank you very much to my wonderful guests for as always delivering with their vast intellects high iq scores and okay uh great empathy towards the poor oppressed fractal players uh in guild wars 2 but yeah <laughs> That's going to be about it. Take care, guys, and we'll see you next time. Okay, thanks for watching. Goodbye.